Hey there, kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and you're invited to join me at my new digital fan club on PopBase. On the PopBase app, you can play with exclusive content that I created, compete for rewards and win collectibles in an experience hosted by Digital Me. Our creator community grows fast with daily content drops to keep you busy. And if you've been keeping up with the contest that's currently running, then you'll know that today is the last day to enter to win a Nintendo Switch Lite and Dead by Daylight. You can download the app on the App Store or by clicking on the link below on your mobile device. So, what are you waiting for? See you on Pop Base, people! I work at a gas station in rural Pennsylvania. It's a boring job, but it's pretty easy and it pays alright. A few weeks ago, this new guy started. I call him Jeremy. Jeremy's weird. He's about 25 or 26. And he hardly speaks, but he's got the creepiest laugh I've ever heard. My boss and I have both noticed this, but it's never been a problem. There's not much that we can do about it. Customers have never complained about him, and he's always done his job fairly well. Up until a few weeks ago. Anyway, that's when things started going missing. Employee theft can be a problem at any business that sells consumer goods, and there's only one person working at a time at this gas station. It's a pretty small place. About two weeks ago, my boss started noticing that we were short on motor oil. At first, it was a few containers at a time. Then, entire shelves and boxes from the back room. Pretty soon, entire shipments would be gone the day after we got them. And it would always be right after Jeremy's shifts. My boss has checked the security camera tapes from every single night that he worked. But he could never catch him in the act. Jeremy would lock up at closing. Then the motor oil would be gone the next day. My boss usually takes the tapes home with him to try to catch Jeremy stealing. But his daughter had a softball game last night, so he asked me to watch the tapes for him. He offered to pay me overtime, under the table, so obviously I took the offer. There are three cameras, so he gave me three different tapes to check. I figured it would be a long night, but I'm trying to save up for a vacation, so I really needed the money. I took the tapes home, popped them in an old VCR, and sat back. Two days ago, the last time he worked, Jeremy started at 4 p.m., Everything seemed pretty normal at first. He counted up his drawer, switched off with a girl who had worked before him, and waited for a customer. The first person who came in was Mrs. Templeton. The timestamp on the video read 4.03. It was regular. As she picked up her cigarettes and a newspaper and paid with a 20. Nothing unusual here. Next customer was some local guy named Ron. He drives a motorcycle, usually comes in every few days. He filled up his tank. Got a big bag of beef jerky, paid with his credit card, and left. Next was some guy with a cowboy hat. I'd never seen him before. We get plenty of strangers passing through. It's like any gas station. He got $40 worth of diesel fuel, paid with a $100 bill, and went on his way. I sat back and I sighed. The only thing more boring than doing this job is watching someone else do it. My boss's offer was enough to keep me watching, though. So I left the tape on. Everything seemed pretty normal. I had a feeling that if Jeremy were stealing motor oil, he knew we were suspicious of him by now. I didn't expect him to be dumb enough to let us catch him on camera. Things stayed boring and routine until about 5 o'clock. At 5.03, Mrs. Templeton came back in. She must have forgot something, but she didn't. She bought the same pack of cigarettes as before. The same newspaper. She paid with another 20. That's odd, I thought, but then again, she's a little absent-minded. I thought Jeremy should have told her, since she already got her smokes, but it's not against the rules to sell somebody the same thing twice. And that's when Ron came in again. He bought another tank of gas for his motorcycle again. I later checked the outdoor camera because I thought maybe he like, had another car he wanted to fill up. And the same pack of beef jerky. He paid with his credit card again. No big deal. I figured this was just a weird coincidence. Mrs. Templeton is forgetful. Ron probably owns more than one Harley. And that's when the guy in the cowboy hat came back in. I felt a chill run down my spine. Don't get diesel. Don't get diesel. I found myself whispering to my empty living room. But he did. He got $40 worth of diesel fuel, and he paid with another $100 bill. Every move he made was identical to his first visit, right down to the way that he scratched his nose before he walked out. Either the guy is rich and he owns a lot of trucks and just moved into town or something really bizarre was happening. I kept watching. Every customer for the next hour was the same as before. Every single one. I was seriously freaked out, and then at 6.03, Mrs. Templeton walked back in. She bought her cigarettes and newspaper again and paid with the 20 again. 
I thought I was going to lose it. I, I only watched another half hour before I started fast forwarding through the rest. It was all the same. Every customer would come in at the exact same time, exactly one hour apart. Now, I know what you're thinking. Okay, that, that sneaky Jeremy had messed with the tapes. He had run a loop of his first hour of business over and over. That wasn't the case. There were windows around the cash register area that the camera covers. and I, I watched. I watched the sunlight fade as the time ran on. Jeremy's routine didn't loop over. He swept, mopped, restocked, and did all his duties, exactly how you would expect. But the same customers kept coming in. I was panicked at this point. Something was seriously wrong with what I was seeing, and I had no explanation for it. I skipped ahead, and when he locked up and walked out to his car, he hadn't stolen anything, but I kept watching, just to make sure. I fast-forwarded one last time to about midnight, and exactly, at exactly 12.03, out of nowhere, Jeremy's face popped up on camera. I don't mean he moved his head into view, I mean that one second the store was empty, the next second his face was all I could see. He wasn't looking at the camera. He was looking at me. I, I was sure of it. I screamed and I fumbled for the remote, but by the time I grabbed it, he was gone. Just as soon as he had left. One frame he was there, next he wasn't. My hands were shaking like crazy, but I popped in another tape. The other indoor camera shows the back area, by the cash register, and I, I'd be able to see how he got up to put his face in the camera like that. I skipped ahead to 12.03, but there was nothing. I would have been able to see him standing on a chair or something on this tape, but he wasn't there. I didn't see him enter the store at all after he left. It's like, it's like he wasn't really there. He doesn't, doesn't know the security code. There's no, no alarms that were triggered that night after he locked up. What I did see, however, was that at 12.03, the motor oil vanished off the shelf. All of it. Same as Jeremy's face. One second it was there, the next it wasn't. I turned the tape off and I went to bed. But I didn't get a wink of sleep. My body was exhausted right now, but my mind was racing. That tape... That tape was undoubtedly the creepiest, most disturbing thing I've ever seen in my life. I work in a few hours. My boss asked me to bring the tapes back in and let him know what I found. But really, really, what the hell am I going to say? Jeremy works the night shift tonight, directly after me. Plan is for my boss to come in just before I leave and confront him with me. And I'm supposed to be the one who caught him stealing. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I suppose I'll have to show my boss the tapes, but, but I don't want to watch them with him. I never want to see anything like that again. I can't get the image of Jeremy just smiling directly into the camera out of my mind. It was the creepiest look I've ever seen on another human being's face. Anyway. I'll try again to get some last minute sleep before I have to go in and deal with this. I'll let you guys know what happened. Update. 2.49 p.m. Updating from my phone, so apologies in advance for any errors, but my boss just finished watching the last of the tapes. I told him what to expect. You really can't prepare someone for something like that. I mean, he's scared speechless. I still am too, and Jeremy is due to come in at four. We've got a little over an hour to get our stuff together, but neither of us knows what to say to him. Are he's, is he just like a messed up guy who likes to steal motor oil and scare the hell out of people, or is he, is he something else? I don't know if this is crazy, but does anyone think, does anyone think that he could have anything to do with the time loop? My boss says he never noticed anything like that in the other tapes. The way that he popped up in this one made me think that he knew I would be watching. Like, like he wanted me to see what he could do. Like he, like he was showing off or something. The way he smiled into the camera was like a little kid showing you a sandcastle they just built or something. I don't know. Probably sound crazy. I sure feel that part. I gotta talk to my boss some more. We have to calm ourselves down and figure out how to handle this. I'll update again tonight, but I... I have a really bad feeling about how this is going to play out. Update. 4.33 p.m. There's no sign of Jeremy. I tried calling him, but his phone has been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. 5.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. I tried calling him, but his phone has been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. 6.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. I tried calling him, but his phone has been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. 7.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. I tried calling him, but his phone has been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. 8.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. I tried calling him, but his phone has been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. 10.58 p.m. Oh my god! Oh my god, I, I just got home and I saw my previous updates. Things uh, things make less sense now than ever. 
Okay, here, here's what here's what I can tell you. Okay, I went to work. Jeremy never showed up. My boss and I decided to call the police, as as you're, as you're well aware. Uh, okay, when I when I picked up the phone to call though, the sun went out. I I don't. I'm not making that up. Okay, that's that's what I thought happened. Apparently, I blacked out for exactly five hours because when I looked at the clock, it was it was nine thirty three. I think I got stuck in in Jeremy's time loop, and then I snapped out of it at the exact point I blacked out. If that if that makes any sense, but that's that's when things got really weird. Okay, my boss was right next to me when I blacked out, ready to corroborate my story to the cops. And when I came to, the phone was in my hand, but it was dead, not even dial tone. My boss was still right there, but he wasn't moving. He was standing up, but he was frozen. And I looked at the clock, and it wasn't moving. And the second hand was stuck on the 12. It was 9.33 exactly. The clock on the counter, the, the computer screen, wasn't moving either. My phone was frozen. There was, there was even a customer at the register waiting for my boss to get him cigarettes. And that would have been his fifth pack of the day. So I got the hell out of there. I didn't lock up. I didn't turn the lights out. And uh, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't grab the security tapes to upload to the internet. Believe me, that was the last thing that was on my mind. The gas station is on a major highway, and cars are parked all along, except they, they weren't parked. Okay, they were frozen. The people inside were sitting still as wax statues. I got in my car, I prayed that it would start, and thankfully it did. And about halfway home, time started up again. The static from the radio turned into music, like, like it was supposed to be. And from what I could tell by listening to the host talk in between songs, no one noticed that the time was frozen, or whatever had happened. I was the only one. I'm sure that Jeremy noticed as well. I have no idea where he is or what he's doing. And I'm hiding in my room. I'm calling the police again in the morning. I don't know if I ever got through them before, but if I did, whether they took me seriously or not, I'm scared for my life at this point. I'll update tomorrow if I can. Final update. 10.33 a.m. So I finally fell asleep last night around 4. I have no idea how I did it. I guess exhaustion finally got the best of me. This morning I woke up to my phone ringing. It was my boss. He'd been calling me since about six. He woke up in time and turned back on last night and immediately called the cops. They came by to see what was wrong. He told them everything. The police around here are all small time guys. They were more concerned with the missing motor oil than anything. My boss figured that he'd take it. You know, as long as he had their attention, they decided to go look for Jeremy. So we keep all our employee applications on file. And since Jeremy just started working here, his was easy to find. They checked the address on it and they headed over to his house. And you're not going to believe what they found. The address Jeremy listed on his application was an empty lot. Or at least it is now. And there used to be a house there, but it burned down back in 1993. Being a small town, almost everyone remembers that fire. A family of four used to live there way back when. Rumor has it that they had an estranged son who they never really talked about, but can't say for sure if that's true. What I can say is true is that after an insurance investigation, the fire was ruled as arson. The entire house was soaked in oil and torched with a Molotov cocktail. The entire family was sleeping when it happened. None of them survived. They never caught the guy who did it. Rumor has it that when they tried to contact the estranged son, no one could find him. Anyway, my boss called and told me this, and I freaked out, and he asked me to come to the gas station. So, what are you, crazy, I said, but he assured me that the cops were there with him. And then he dropped a bomb. The FBI were also in town, and they were going to talk to me one way or another, so I might as well come in. So it was about 7.15, and I wanted to go back to bed, so I, I figured I wouldn't be able to sleep much more anyway. So I went down. Four men in suits greeted me, told me to have a seat. We went over everything two or three times until they got all the details down. I told them about Jeremy and the security tapes last night at work, everything. And finally, after finishing, one of the agents says, Oh Christ, we've got another one on our hands. And they made me sign a bunch of papers saying I wouldn't tell anybody about what happened. Then they made me sign a bunch of papers saying I wouldn't tell anybody about what happened. So I can't say much more. Okay, I might be breaking the law just by posting this. So I'm home now. I'm not sure what to do with myself. The agent's words, when I told him the story, are going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Anyway, I've got to go. So I've got some errands to run today, and then I have to go into work to pick up some tapes. My boss and I think this new guy, Jeremy, he's a complete creep. He's stealing motor oil, and I have to watch the security footage to see if I can catch him doing it. 
I have better things to do, but my boss is paying me overtime under the table. I'm trying to save up for vacation, so I could really use the money. It should be pretty simple. Oil always goes missing right after his shifts. I figure I'll just watch the tapes, catch him in the act, and that'll be that. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to tell you thank you for watching tonight's video. Because this is October, I'm going to make this nice, short, and sweet. If you'd like to help support the show or the podcast, head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. If you'd like to get yourself some new Halloween and creepypasta-inspired teas, you can head over to etsy.com slash shop slash ivory monocle tea. And if you want to catch me... Creeps McPasta and Mew during our live Halloween tour around the southern U.S., head over to creepypasta.showfetti.com. That's creepypasta.s-h-o-f-e-t-t-i.com. Hang on to your hats, kids, because this year is a 31-day Halloween countdown. Happy Halloween and sweet dreams. <laughs>